Hi everyone, this is uh, Mr. Patrick Ang. Uh, if you're watching this video, you should be from Secondary 1, Express 1 and A from Chaka Changi. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go through this chapter on force and pressure. So we're trying something different for this chapter where we, instead of us going through with you uh, your notes in, in class, you'll be doing that at home through this video. And so that when you come to school, you will be doing your worksheets instead and you can clarify anything you do not understand. So we hope that this way you could learn better. So we're just trying this out. So if you have any feedback, please let us teachers know so that we can see how we can improve on this. Alright? So um, you should have your notes with you. Uh, if you don't, you should go and take it out now. Uh, because we'll be going through the PowerPoint slides and you'll be filling in some of the blanks shortly. Alright? Okay, so let's begin. So, you should be going to your slide. So this chapter is on force and pressure. And so we have forces uh, everywhere around us. So how do we describe it in science and how do we understand it? So this is lesson one. So in this lesson, you'll cover what is a force, what are the effects of a force, and how do we measure it, what do we use to measure it, what units do we, do we have for forces. Okay, so basically, you probably learned this in primary school, uh, a force is either a push or a pull. Now as I was preparing this, it came to mind, you know, because I was a Star Wars fan, so I thought that maybe before I continue, we could show, show you a short video just about force push and pull. Yeah, so this is the video that you saw just now. Alright, enjoy. <laughs> Right, so if, if you're like me, you're interested, you can also go to YouTube, you can find out more. That was Star Wars for you. So anyway, let's back to our lesson. So a force is a push or a pull. So we can classify forces into two categories, contact forces and non-contact forces. So by the name, they suggest contact force acts when an object is being touched, while non-contact forces act on an object without touching it. So you see all these blanks, right? You you should know by now. You need to fill it up in your notes, all right? So what is an example of a contact force? You have frictional force. Without contact, friction won't happen. And for non-contact forces, examples include magnetic force and gravitational force. Okay, all these three forces you will learn more in the next video. All right. So although we cannot see forces, we can actually feel their effects. We can see their effects. And so, 
In the next part, we're going to go through what are the some effects that you that forces have on objects. The first one is a force can change the shape or size of an object. So when it's squeezing a sponge or even turning and, and, and twisting a balloon, you realize the shape and the size actually change. Okay, next we have uh, a force can change the motion of an object. So here, right, if let's say you have a stationary object, you can actually cause it to move. It's just like how you push a stationary ball, it actually moves. Then if it's already moving, you can actually change the direction. So similar to how probably some of us who play uh, soccer or play netball, you, when you throw a ball and you hit it, you actually change direction. So you can also change the speed of a moving object and you can actually stop a moving object. Alright, if you want to find out more, you can actually check out the text, your textbook, page 96. So this is a picture of a volleyball. Too bad we don't have a volleyball sports in our school. Oh well. The last one, uh, a force can also produce a turning effect. So but we call this turning effect actually because the force causes an object to turn and rotate around pivot. We probably learned a bit about that uh, in primary school, but uh, we'll go through more of this in detail in the in the next chapter. Okay, so opening a bottle, opening a wardrobe, whether it's opening a door, or whether it's the sitting on a seesaw, all these are turning effects of the force. Okay? So probably if you need to pause along the way, you just pause. Alright? Let's move on. So I, I included this part because I thought that it would be easier to understand forces when we look at something more familiar. So if you want to measure how long an object is, usually you will use a ruler. And we measure it in meters. We learned that in the previous chapter on physical quantities. But if you want to measure how big a force is, we use something called a spring balance and we measure in Newton. Now Newton is a new word I'll explain later, but basically this is, Newton like meter is a SI unit, it's a, it's a unit that we use to measure, in this case, force. So there are two kinds of spring balance, this one you probably see either with your Galanguni or probably see it in the, in the markets where they actually use it. This is known as uh, extension spring balance, it's because you actually stretch the spring to measure the force here in this case, you probably see it also, um, even a bathroom scale is also something similar. You actually will compress, so it's a compression spring balance, actually the squeezing of the spring. Okay, either way you measure force, so that, that is the, how, what they do. Alright, next. So just now as we mentioned, uh, the SI unit for force is Newton. So you came from this guy, Sir Isaac Newton, you probably I've heard of his name before, maybe not. Anyway, he's born in like 1642. He helped describe gravitation and the three laws of motion. You can find out more about this uh, on YouTube. There are some helpful videos to explain what, what this means. So anyway, the SI unit for force is Newton. Name after him. Alright? So yeah, it's just an interesting uh, cartoon that I found. So, so if you remember, Newton found out about gravity one day when sitting under a tree and then an apple kind of dropped on his head. Well, you can find out more if you want to. Alright, if not, that ends the lesson for this part. It's just a short section. Uh, if not, I'll see you in the next video. Alright.